Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. Nice to see you again. The guys from the Secret Service, can you dim the lights a little bit? <laughs> it's very hard to sit here not seeing anything, being totally blind. Can you put a little bit of a light on? Oh, now we can see the audience. Okay. Good-looking group. Slava, you are in the crowdfunding business, right? Yep. Tell us very quickly what is crowdfunding. Um, so crowdsourcing is the ability for any small bits of things to come together to make one big thing happen. So you can crowdsource a book by getting words or a chapter from every person in this room. Maybe if, we, if the room was dark, we would crowdsource light by all of us turning on our phones onto the light so it would be a bright room. So we uh, crowdsource money, so we get small bits of money to get one big pile of money to come together, and it's now called crowdfunding. Good. Can we give the audience a quick demo of crowdfunding? A quick demo? I mean, sure. It's uh, real time. Anybody can... No, no, I will give the... If you agree, I will suggest what we are going to buy, all of us together. How about we are trying to buy Slava taking off his shirt? How, how, will you, how will you make a target that you know it will be attainable in two minutes? Don't I'm, make it too high. I think that is possible. I don't know if I would do that, but... No, you will do it, you know, because now you are, <laughs> uh, you are captured. You are on the stage. You cannot it's true. It's true. How about if we set it as uh, 30, 30 euros? Who's creating the campaign? I create the campaign. Will you do it for 30 euros? It doesn't sound like enough to me. I'll he will do it for 30 euros. I now I, now I need... If you want to see some chest hair, I'll do that for 30 euros. For 30 euros, he will take the, the shirt. And only the people, this is a, a honor, be, honor wait, system. Wait, it needs to be 30 people, one euro each. No, no, this is yeah. too much. Uh, yeah, yeah. Too many people. Only crowd, the people who chip in will be allowed to take a picture of Slava without uh, his shirt. No one else, please don't take it. I will chip so, into the campaign uh, 10, 10 euros. Anybody would No, no, like? you have to do it on the app. It's all live. It's no, all real time. No, I cannot time. do it on the app. We don't we're have not, time. We're not we doing it, this we manual do it stuff. Live. We do it's it live. It's a scalable system. It's all online right now. No. You could do it live. Pardon? It, it's a scalable system. Everybody can do it right now if they wanted to. Let's, let's, let's do crowdsourcing. <laughs> who think we should do it only on the app? Raise your hand. Nobody. Who think Whoa. we should, should do it live here and now? Raise your hand. Okay, you have... You are preaching crowdsourcing, you know. That's fine. They have to put money into an Indiegogo campaign, and we have to see it. Okay, we will give you the 30 euro, and you will put. So it how about here's on. what we'll do. So if it actually gets funded up to 100 euros by 20 people before the end of the uh, the end of the talk, we'll do it at the end of the talk. All okay. Right. Anybody who is willing to to chip in uh, into campaign of 100 euros for Slava to take off his shirt, please come quietly and throw the money on the edge of the. Of the stage while the while the while the interview goes on, I will start. I have Thai's butt. Nice, nice. Thai's butt. I don't know how much of Thai's butt you have. I to. think some of the people actually want real questions answered. I put 500 Thai butt. Okay, how 500 Thai butt. Anybody who would like to compare, <laughs> don't embarrass me. Please contribute to the campaign, even one euro. This is our new uh, approach. Instead of uh, apps, whoa, more people are coming up. I don't know what's going on right now, Good. but this is happening. All right, you want to ask a question? Okay, Slava, how did you come on? Come on, how did you start the? How did you start Indiegogo? How did you come to the idea? I don't know if anybody's noticed, but it's been only men so far that have no, put there anybody was one down. one lady. One lady. I'm not sure. One oh, lady. sorry, I didn't notice. Great, nice. How did we start Indiegogo? Yeah, so in 2006 we came together, my two co-founders and I. And uh, we had a mutual frustration of trying to raise money using the internet. And if you can remember 2006, I know it's crazy, but back then, whoa, more women. Uh, so back then, 
YouTube was not even owned by Google. Twitter was brand new. Obama was not a word for most people in the world. And uh, raising money was just really difficult. I was using uh, MySpace. Facebook was you know, smaller than MySpace. I was using MySpace and PayPal. And my, my dad died of cancer when I was a kid. So I was trying to raise money. And uh, Danae, my co-founder, was working with different filmmakers and entrepreneurs. Eric was on the board of a theater company. We just thought the internet was the ultimate tool for democratization. You know, eBay was cool, YouTube was cool, but access to capital was all about knowing the right gatekeeper. So we just thought very naively, why not create a platform where anybody can raise money for any idea? That's it. I mean, now we're sending millions of dollars every week around the world to 70 to 100 countries a week, and it's pretty exciting. Really? How, uh, how long you are in the business? We launched January 2008, so we just had our uh, seven-year anniversary. And how much did you raise since then? Uh, we don't disclose the specific numbers, but I mean, we're sending millions every week around the world. Good. Ken, what is the largest campaign you run? Yeah, so we've had uh, Ubuntu Edge raise 12.8 million US. And who, who raised it? Ubuntu Edge, an open source uh, mobile company. So a software company that they look to create a phone. They're actually now selling their Ubuntu Edge phones. And uh, right now we have some really cool campaigns open. So today, for example, it's not very electronic, but uh, we have a campaign called Flow Hive, which is honey, like, you know, sugar, honey, that's totally sustainable, where you can get honey without having to deal with the smoke and the, the bees and having to actually try to deal with the creation of the honey. It's totally sustainable. The bees come into this hive, drop the honey, and you can pour it out like a beer tap, you can pour honey out of a tap, right, right out of the hive. And you're probably wondering, oh, that sounds pretty cool, that's interesting. Well, it's 12 days old, they've already raised 4.2, 4.3 million dollars US, it's from Australia. It's the largest campaign ever um, outside the US, and who knows where it'll get to, but it's already been seen in 12 days by every single country of the world, um, even the territories that many of you and I don't know their names, and it's been funded in 100 and I think like 19 countries already. 119 countries. In 12 days. In 12 days. What was the fastest campaign? That was the fastest to reach, I think, a million. But uh, there's all kinds of great ones. I mean, there was uh, um, this uh, photographer, a blogger in New York. He met a principal of an uh, inner city high school, uh, sorry, an inner city school where it was really hard to ever get into high school or college, really, because they were just having a tough time in school. He met the principal and said, can I do anything for you? And the principal said, I'd like to be able to send each sixth grader to Harvard, which is a university, a good university in America, because I want to inspire them to want to go to college. Harvard is a good university in America. They're going to sue you for uh, saying only a good university. A very good one. A very good one. Um, I went to Penn, so I'm a okay, university Okay, now I understand. That's, that's a great one. But... Uh, <laughs> So they wanted to raise $30,000 to send every sixth grader. They were able to raise $1.5 million in uh, two weeks, which is great. It just shows you how individuals have the power to be able to you know, change people's lives. And they were able to get 55, I think, thousand funders. And now every sixth grader from this high school for the next 10 years and more is going to go to Harvard and get inspired. So who knows? We might be getting like the next doctors coming from this inner city school. Guys, you hear the noise from the other room. It sounds as if the... Let's give them an answer that they will think that something exciting is going on here. Exactly. One, two, three. Whoa. You are terrific. Nice. nice. Slava, it's all of honor of you and your uh, 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 be less uh, uh, honey. That's right. Yeah. It's called Flow Hive. Flow Hive. Very good. You can pull it up right now on your phone if you'd like. If you have a phone. If you have a phone. If you have, who needs a phone? At four years from now, you're ahead of that. Tell me, what is the most ridiculous product you raise money for? Um, well, I don't think any of them are ridiculous. Don't, we're, don't, uh, don't. No, but we're, we're an open platform, so we allow anybody to raise money for absolutely anything. There's no application process. There's no gatekeeper. No one will judge your project. If you want people to judge you, you should, you know, go back to a banker or a VC. <laughs> but uh, on Indiegogo, anything can happen. And uh, some of the more interesting things are we had the first ever crowdfunded baby. So a couple was not able to afford in vitro fertilization, was turned down by all the insurance companies. And they went to the crowd on Indiegogo and looked for the money. They got the money. They had the in vitro and they had the baby. The name of the baby is Indiegogo. 
And no, no, I'm kidding. That's not true. The baby part is true. The name is not true. We also have a, a thing called bug assault, which is a, a gun, which is air compression gun that shoots salt to kill flies. Shoot salt to kill flies. Don't and they tried to raise 15,000. Don't you think it represents some kind of cruelty, killing flies? They tried to raise $15,000, and they were able to raise half a million. And we also have uh, state-of-the-art vibrators for anybody that's interested. What and are vibrators? What is it? Vibrators are Internet of Things devices. This is in order to mix cement? It's to help improve your day or night. Okay, I will yeah. think about it. Yeah. Anybody who is interested in supporting the vibrator industry, what is the URL of the, how they find the, how they find it on Indiegogo? The vibrator? The vibrator, yeah. There's a couple of them. Uh, Anastasia, give me some names of some vibrators. Okay. There's Eva, E-V-A, Vibes, wait, 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 Vibes is V-I-B-E-A. This Look, lady all, seems before, to have wait, wait, a very notice, good notice, knowledge of the... No, no. Notice before you asked if the women want to do a campaign to take my shirt off. No one pays attention. I start putting out vibrator. Everybody's on their phone. You are going so like, really very low, you know. So Vibes is V-I-B-E-A-S-E. -E. The cool thing about Vibes, it is actually totally Internet of Things, is you could be wearing one right now, and Slava, your boyfriend... Slava, let's go to okay, another sorry. topic. All right, sorry. We exhausted this... Uh... Just saying. We also have... Uh, you want to bring up the Blue Smart? You have Blue Smart? Do you have it with you? So check this out. We actually have live demo. You had no idea. Hey, hey, sir. You know they are here, kids under 16. I got it. So this is a live demo. Yes. What is this? This live is live demo of what? Before it's called Blue Smart. The color blue. B L U E Smart. One word. And this is a smart suitcase. Totally awesome. In you know Mobile World Congress four years from now. Because four years from now, at least. 33% of this audience will have one of these. And what this includes is all the right sensors for you to be able to travel more intelligently. So for example, if you have your phone connected, right, which you always do, you'll be able to Bluetooth connect to be able to see if somebody's stealing it away from you. So if he's taking it away and I have my phone, it's going away, alarm, alarm, alarm. Okay, fine, when is that gonna happen? But if you check your bag and you're like, oh, I don't want the airline to steal my bag, you can actually track it through their GPS coordinates that anytime they lose it anywhere, you'll be able to check on your phone, oh, you were supposed to go to Spain, but the bag went to Cairo. But you can track it, right? So you Won't can- Won't it help you that you track it if the suitcase is in Cairo and you know that it is in Cairo? Well, then you can go to Cairo to get it. Oh, okay. That's a good thought. Then the other thing is you can actually just, you know, sometimes you overpack. Well, just there's two sensors, one right here, one right here, which <laughs> just by the actual movement can judge how heavy your bag is. So you'll know how much it weighs. Now, the best part is I know some of you right now are saying, hey, I wish I was actually charging my phone while I was listening to this presentation. I'm pretty low on juice. But yes, you have six full charges included. So there's a battery pack here for six full charges. And I know sometimes you're traveling with another person. So you have one USB right here, and you have another USB in the front. This is fascinating, I know. I'm, it's not even my product, it's their product. I just love it. How much you raise for it? They've raised $1.4 million as part of their Indiegogo campaign. And we've already um, in, created this new, pro this new feature on Indiegogo, uh, which is changing the industry, which is we just launched it in January called In Demand. So after their campaign is over, a lot of entrepreneurs or creatives or social folks want to continue all their traction. So already they've raised another $800,000 in demand, which is the name of the feature, in demand. So in total, they've raised 2.2 million, uh, 1.4 in the campaign, 0.8 in demand. Just a minute. Guys, let's answer these guys. One, two, three. <laughs> they are terrific, aren't that they? That was good. That was good. Good. Uh, Mark, can you count uh, how, uh, how well we are doing in the campaign and let this, us know? Just so we know, this doesn't count until it hits an Indiegogo campaign. By the way, I have to, tell you, I have to tell you a Jewish story about the rabbi and... Whoa. Go and count and let us know before the time is going over. So the rabbi, the kadi, and the priest are going to the, to the funeral of... Uh, their friend, a clergyman, and while they stand there, the, 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 the priest say, actually, I owe him 
$100. So he take $100 and put on the grave. The caddy say, I also owed him, uh, owe him $100. He put $100 on the grave. The rabbi says, I also owe him $100. He write a check for $300, put on the grave, and take the $200. <laughs> but nobody has done it here. With Indiegogo, he could have just crowdfunded it right away. Let me ask you a not-so-nice question. Uh-oh. Yeah. Okay. Can I? You say that there is no checks, no nothing. Anybody can put on Indiegogo anything. So yeah. how you avoid uh, abusing the platform or abusing the, yeah. the money of the naive pe of some naive people? Yeah, it's really interesting. So I had a pretty good job after college. I was making decent money as a consultant working to launch new companies or new products. And then I told them that I was leaving to create this company. It wasn't called Indiegogo yet. And everybody said the same thing. You know, there's good ideas. There's OK ideas. There's not so good ideas. Slava, I mean, this is just full on stupid. Just full on idiotic. Number one, no one's going to give money unless they get profit in return. And number two, more important, the first time you open up, Somebody will say they're raising money to make a product, but then they're just going to go to the Bahamas and go on vacation. Nice thought. That's what they said right away since 2006, 2007, and then we launched in January 2008. The incredible thing is we've distributed many, 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 many millions of dollars uh, around the world. We have virtually zero fraud. Really? And, yeah, it's crazy. And the reason is, is these... <laughs> And the reason is, is these three things. But I heard that the tourism industry in the Bahama took a big uh, growth since you launched your platform. Correlation, not causation. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, number one is, like PayPal, we created the algorithms to be able to monitor and track all of uh, the actions that are happening on Indiegogo. This is very similar stuff to what any credit card company would do. And Max Lefchin, the actual founder of PayPal, is actually one of our angel investors. So that's number one. Number two is we created the trust and safety team at Indiegogo uh, and is really a part of the industry, which is to be able to create operations and process to be able to monitor all these things. And then number three is actually the most powerful. Believe it or not, the crowd is actually very intelligent. And if I was gonna try to cheat you out of money as an individual, I would take you to dinner, I would talk to you at your house, I would have it in a very private place where I can lie to you, I could manipulate things, and you would then give me money and I would run away. So there, it's a little easier. When you're in front of everybody else, no one wants to be a sucker. Everybody is, one, afraid of themselves doing something wrong, but they're even more afraid about looking like a fool in front of everybody else. So the crowd is actually really, really, really strong at trying to make sure that they don't get taken advantage of. So those three things come together, and Indiegogo is a super safe and high integrity environment. That's great. What is the next stage for Indiegogo? For us, Indiegogo is really just about serving one great uh, customer at a time. When I see uh, you know, the two founders over there from BlueSmart, and I met them just yesterday for the first time, and they show me the actual product, I mean... BlueSmart, if you don't remember, is this very intelligent 180 IQ suitcase. suitcase correct. And, uh, you know, that we're just empowering all these people to help change the world. And my viewpoint is if you can empower one entrepreneur, that one entrepreneur can change the world. And we're doing it at mass. You know, we have like 300,000 campaigns. So if just even a few of them change the world, we're changing the world in a really good place. So it's kind of fun. For uh -huh. us, um, <laughs> thank you. For us, you know, from a more product and functional perspective, we need to become a lot more global, even though we're the largest global f platform already, but there's a lot of work to be done. We're already in several languages and several currencies, but there's work to be done. Uh, we want to become a lot more mobile, a lot more personalized. I think it's super early. Uh, just even compare it to like social networking last decade. So just think about where social networking was at in January or whatever, March 5th, 3rd we are now, uh, 2015. So just go back a decade. So 2005, I think there's a lot of excitement left to go. Slava, how many projects did you fund, uh, did you fund until now? Yeah, something like up to 300,000. 300,000? Yeah, somewhere around there. 300,000? It's changing every day. That's amazing. It's really amazing. Tell me, 
this give you this give you this give you unique unique observation point on human nature yeah really i mean it you you found the 300 thousand project you can see what people are interested to fund can you tell us the the first 10 15 domains which you can think about as being the most popular ones for people to fund yeah so one other the, other than vibrators yeah, yeah yeah vibrators are more recent but the um you know i would always tell my team that i think there's a special opportunity we're creating here where we're really figuring out the demand of the future of where yes. people are trying to show what they're interested in. And my so team share, would be- So share your wisdom with us. And my team would say, uh-huh, uh-huh, we're really just helping people raise some money. And then all of a sudden there was a reporter who came to us a couple of years ago, a few years ago, and they said, you know, is there anything that you're learning here through the data or the trends that you I can- You are going around beating around the bush. Tell us what people are interested in. So I told them. Don't keep all the information close to your vest. So I told them a couple of years ago, I said, activity trackers are kind of interesting right now. Two and a half years ago, okay, two and a half years ago. Activity trackers are kind of interesting. People having things on their wrists or somewhere on their body where they're tracking their activity or their heart rate or their other results. And like, oh, well, how many of those do you have? Well, I, we have like five, seven different activity trackers. And they're like, okay, that's pretty interesting. I'm going to write an article about that. Well, if you look fast forward two, two and a half years, today, if I told you activity trackers are cool, it's like dumb, right? It's like yesterday's news. Okay, what are today's news? So then after activity trackers, it was 3D printers. Okay. After 3D printers, it's drones, right? After drones, it's uh, robots, small family robots. So for me to predict four years from now, or even two years from now, uh, a percentage of everybody here will have a small robot slash artificial intelligence device which is not their phone that they'll interact with to improve the productivity of their daily life. So this is the upcoming thing? Within the next three years. What else? <laughs> what else? Wow. You I've found that 300,000. All, not all of them can be in small intelligent well, robots which you buy and you don't I'll know what you, to do with them. I'll give you more macro trends. I think that um, you'll see banking will look to go towards our industry to help uh, save the fact that they always turn down all the small businesses. Right now, b banks don't really get to service small businesses uh, because of the rules, but they'll look to create a financial product off of what Indiegogo does. So that'll be really interesting. I also think what that- What about uh, tools to rob banks or something like this? No demand? Uh, we don't have as much of that. Okay. We don't have as much of that. I also think that right now people are asking, is it Indiegogo or is it VCs? Do I go crowdfunding or do I go VCs? Who's going to win? Neither is going to win. It's going to be mutual because they're going to grow together. Right now we actually have VCs are funding an Indiegogo funded project every 10 days. Every 10 to 14 days they're putting in millions of dollars into an Indiegogo funded project. So I think you're going to see more the VC application is going to be an Indiegogo campaign because they're not going to want to say, hey, you know, is this going to come to market well? How are you going to be prove it? Who's your audience? You'll just say, here you go. And the same difference happened just a few years ago when they used to be, I have this app I'm going to create. I have this software I'm going to create. But now if you go, they say, I don't care what you're going to create. Show me what you did and how it's doing. It's going to be the same way uh, with hardware products, Internet of Things, with all these different types of companies, even if it's a pizza shop. Tell me, uh, supporting industry, I, I saw at least one company which say, we will run your campaign, we will put you on Indiegogo, we will help you raise yeah. money, etc., etc. What have you created in terms of uh, supporting industry? Yeah, it's actually really interesting. If you remember how eBay grew, at, at one point, uh, you know, some people didn't know how to use eBay, they didn't have their digital phones, they didn't know how they wanted to use it, and all of a sudden there became a whole other industry of people having little stores where you brought your bike into the little store, they took a digital photograph of the bike, they put it onto eBay, they took 30%, all that good stuff. And an amazing thing has been happening, which is there's an entire agency business that has been created where people say they'll help make your video, they'll help do your marketing, they'll help do your retargeting, they'll help do your promotion, they'll run your campaign. 
we actually have uh, people at Indiegogo that help manage all those relationships. So if you want to be connected to any of those agencies, we have people that we work with and trust. So we're happy to help you. We don't run any agency ourselves. We actually give all that away for free. So we're happy to help anybody. But I do think there's a massive industry that's happening. It's just a matter of time before we're able to open up Indiegogo to completely be API open, where anybody will be able to build complete application and software and ideas on top of Indiegogo and our data. Can you give us a realistic estimate how many jobs you helped to create in the last seven years? That's actually an incredible question. I, so I will ask it again. I, I don't have a good it's answer. Not so, it's not so uh, incredible. You see, you even, you even cannot raise 100 euro Let's put it this for, way. to support your uh, taking off your shirt. But I'll simplify ahead. it this way. I'll simplify it this way. Use whatever math you want. So if you take 300,000 campaigns and you say only 10% of them are quote unquote businesses, which means you're now at 30,000 projects. And if you take 30,000 projects, and even if you take just 30,000 projects, each, each one of them is employed, right? So that's 30,000 employees. Now, even if you go really simple again, you say that only 10% of them actually hire people. So that's 3,000, right? So you have 30, right? And then you take the three and you say, how many did they hire? Well, you could take whatever number you want. It doesn't matter. Let's just average it out to say 10 again, right? So you now just had another 30,000. So it's 60,000 jobs. I use simple math. Hopefully, it's a lot more than that. Your mother is proud of you. <laughs> I'll tell you a story. This will, this is, so my mother has no idea what I do, no idea what I do. And I would tell her, I was, she didn't know what I did before when I was a strategy consultant. I said, Mom, I'm going to uh, become she a. She wanted you to be a pianist, right? Or a medical doctor between she the wanted two of us. Me, she wanted me to be a doctor. She's a doctor. And uh, I told her, I'm going to become an entrepreneur. I'm going to start this thing. She's like, OK, do they give good insurance? Do they give good insurance? And I said, yes, they give good health insurance. She's like, okay, good. So then we're a couple years into it. Indiegogo is not going that well. We got turned down by 93 VCs. How I've, many VCs? 93. I told her that uh, actually we don't have insurance. She's like, you need to get insurance. And, uh, you know, every two months she would ask me, do you have insurance? Do you have insurance? And I didn't have insurance, which is not appropriate, but I didn't have insurance. So three years in, I finally, you know, get insurance. Indiegogo, we're, we're getting insurance for ourselves. Five years in, we have this great campaign. It was called the Karen Klein Bus Monitor Campaign. There was a woman, an elderly woman, that was bullied by little kids, these 10-year-olds. And it was caught on YouTube, caught on video. And it went super viral. I mean, it went everywhere around the world. Hopefully, some of you know about what I'm talking about. I see a lot of head nodding. And my mom, I'm talking to her on the phone. And she says, Slavichka. So my name is Slava, and if you say Ichka, it means like I love you. So it, take your name and put Ichka behind it. That means your name, I love you. So she's like, Slavichka. She's like, I need to ask you, have you heard about this bus monitor? And I'm like, yes. She's like, it's crazy. They've raised $600,000 US because they feel bad for this woman. They're trying to send her on vacation. They tried to raise $5,000. How do you know, mom, about this? Everybody at the hospital is talking about it, and they're all saying how they can get $600,000. I'm like, wow, mom, do you know where that happened? She's like, yes, on the internet. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, that's great. Do you know what site they use? She's like, no, I have no idea. I'm like, mom, you have no idea. She's like, no. I'm like, mom, they use Indiegogo. No, no, Slavichka. They raised $600,000 on the internet. I'm like, mom, they used Indiegogo. Your Indiegogo? Yes, mom. Oh, I like Indiegogo. <laughs> Slavichka, thank you. This was great. You're great. You are terrific. Ma what about the shirt? 47 euro. Slavichka, you have to do it for 47 euro. Take off your shirt. One, two, three. I need to, I need to, see, <laughs> I need to see it in an Indiegogo campaign. For 47 euros, you get a button. Here we go. Oh, oh, whoa. Whoa. All right. There you go. All right. Take your shirt. Todaraba. All right. Gracias. So now what we are going to do is the 40. So we give it to you. You would contribute it to a charity.